Speaker Christian Berger, who will, is an engineer of, of, of technology, and he will talk about fax signalizing. Hello, and welcome to my presentation to the on the subject of long distance copiers of Group Two, Three. It's a subject that was quite controversial on the, throughout the time of. Uh, of uh, the Congress. In the USA, there is an anti faxer organization who wants to work against long distance copiers. And I will show you, want to show you some examples of uh, FRAX configuration. Don't be afraid, we are not going to use the long distance copier. A part of the use, uh, usage data, fax devices also need to have some technological parameter they have to exchange, so the metadata. The easiest contact, uh, access to these device uh, information is on the devices itself. Many devices can print these sent informations. Each sequence here is in the is within this fax device itself. In the beginning, the receiving fax device sent its no ID and some information, and the, then the sending fax sends a lot of data. Next. We send a lot of binary zeros to verify the page, uh, the, the connection. Then, then uh, we send get information. Then we get the send data and all the information that the page is over. The receiving fax sends re ex acknowledges the reception of the page and the sending says goodbye. The signalizing data are modulated according to one type format. Um, we change the zeros and ones to different to tones. Then we have a modulation on top of that. We have the uh, stream up top and the bits below. Uh, HDL uh, allows us to send data on a synchronous channel. On a synchronous channel, we always transmit uh, bits, all the bits, at this, uh, and at one t unit of time, always the same number of bits, whether we, we have any content or not. In the time when no data needs to be connect, transmitted, we send a flag sequence. This sequence is zero, six ones, and uh, once more zero. We always repeat it and tra transmit it repeatedly if there are no usage da data. If we have data we need to transmit, and they have different zero and one bits. To differentiate it them from the flag bits, all five, every five ones, we add a, another bit. It's always zero and allows us to check whether it's a number of the ones behind each other or a flag sequence. In the beginning, there's always a header and at the end, a 16 bit checksum. The header contains an address field, eight bits. All, usually all bits one, if you use facts, and a control field. The control field contains the about what type of message is transmitted and whether that message is the last message in a sequence. Within the frame, all data are sent with their additional bits to ensure not enough, uh, too many ones are there. There are no start and stop bits because we have the flags to differentiate between the frames. This example shows the sim most simple case. We just send all the data, the receipt receipt is confirmed and the connection is closed. If there are bitmap errors in this case, they lead to image errors. They are sometimes detected in the receiving facts because we do not, if the length of a line is wrong, but we can't request further lines. The received facts can only, if there are too many wrong lines, 
the, the connection can be closed. To be able to send fax over bad lines, we are able to use ECM. The image data is put into HDLC frames and they are, have a checksum and at the end the receiving facts can request to the sending facts to resend uh, invalid blocks and that is repeated so long until all pages are uh, received in the, uh, correctly there are also further informations like fact like color facts or voice data this mm, mm, that means you, uh, it's hard to hide errors in these other methods so it's important that the connection is correct and uh, ecm uh, makes sure that there are no unknown errors that also means both fax devices needs to have the memory in memory and in the 80s that would have been much too expensive Nowadays, in voice of IP, there are additional problems with the, for the fax. Usual voice of IP protocols like ZIP transport the data using RTP. That means the data is taken into 20 millisecond long chunks and they are put in a UDP package with a header and this package is then sent, transmitted. The receiver receives all these packages, unpacks them, writes them into a buffer and then uh, returned into uh, audio data, to an audio signal. However, what are 20 milliseconds? Quartz oscilloscators have the issue that they are have a different speed. So 20 milliseconds for one receiver might be slightly different than 20 milliseconds at the sender side. That means that leads to the issue that different the data is received and sent at different speeds. That leads uh, that it's possible that the waiting buffer is too too full or too empty. So additional data needs to be added or removed. Usually that uh, has a negligible effect, uh, and you can even optimize it in such a way that the the gaps are only happen when there's no speaking. However, modems and especially with the uh, long distance copier, we have a long time where a modem is talking and modems have an issue when there are uh, short uh, inter losses of information. They need to be synchronized with the uh, with uh, with all the data, uh, and if the if data is lost, the modem is not synchronized with the sending modem. That leads to a lot of bit errors, which are in, uh, which lead in some cases to a loss of the connection. To reduce the issue, T eighty three was developed. The idea behind T83 is that we circumvent the modem. We try to communicate, uh, we, we try to connect the computer of one fax device to the computer of the other fax device. That leads to the circumvention of the modem issues. Another situation is the part is that less data needs to be transmitted. We do not need a full data connection, but only need to transmit the used data. In addition, we can even uh, add redundant data just in case a package is lost. Wireshark is able to decode T80 data. And here you can see how the signal data is transmitted. Because signal data is with 300 bits per second, every single octet is transmitted. That also reduces the latency that might be included. Because fax is real-time fax. 
other messages indicate whether a modem should be turned on and off. Otherwise, it's like any other fax data. We also see the zeros that are connected to verify the connection. We did that implemented because we have T83 gateways that should be implemented to ensure that only one side talks T83 and the other one T30, the old standard. The initial idea was that fax devices in the future are able to speak voice of IP addresses and are able to be connected to the Internet. The communication with older fax devices would be used through a digital modem in the devices or through T83 gateways. Unfortunately, very few there are very few internet-aware fax devices. So until, unless, uh, apart from some fax servers, there are very few devices that say speak fax IP directly. There are also further fax devices. For example, the German weather service sends weather facts through shortwave. Also, the fax device in the space lab is probably not a group 3 fax. That is my short introduction in the signal information in group 3 long distance copier. I hope you enjoyed it. Use the power of the Telefax. You will for, uh, see what is possible with this communicative secret weapon. Thank you very much for your attention. Also from the uh, uh, translation booth, from, from me, Franz T. If you have feedback, use the hashtag 3C3Lingo. I hope everybody else learned as much as we did today. Okay, back to the questions, because we don't want to go too far over the 42 minutes. Why are they T83 over VoIP? Because, uh, why, why was it specified? Because T83 over SMTP was already specified. Do we want to have real-time facts? That means the moment when it's scanned, the sender prints it already, or do we want to have Something similar to email, where we basically send an image via email. It is the disadvantage that we can't be sure that the fax was received. I do not know how or whether there is a sender recognition exchange in an appropriate manner. However, it's not used. A large issue is all the the practical implementation because we have a physical fax device, uh, a device that is in a, some uh, company already, and T37. We would need very extensive methods. We would need to save the document before sending it. And this is the smaller variant, T83. Part of that is, what do I do if I have a fax with 300 dpi, but the other side just has 200 dpi, and we had to calculate the difference. So there are fax to mail implementations, but it's a completely different. There are completely different issues. There are advantages and disadvantages. The next question, um, what about group four? What's group three? Where are the, what are the other two groups? Mm, yeah, I have never heard anything about group one or two fax machines. Group four is uh, through ESDN, but they are very rare. A group four fax wants to be connected to ESDN directly and then we have a transparent 64-bit data channel and would be a, a lot quicker and would suddenly has a lot of special features like text transmission or arbitrary file transmission. 
There are digital group three faxes, a couple a couple analog fax devices that uh, they still scan the image line by line and then the printer prints it in real time. However, we are not talking about pixel or there's no data compression. And that's used by the Deutsche Wetterdienst, the German weather service for weather facts. Uh, another question, what's weather facts? Oh yeah, weather facts. Um, the idea is very simple. Um, we have, for example, ships on, on the sea and they want to know how the weather is going to be because if they are on the sea, uh, 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 streaming ahead, it's very important. You can call them up, but a weather map is much more uh, much more handy. So the Deutsche Wetterdienst has a shortwave sender and it sends the weather maps all over the world. And you can get a nice image of how the weather is going to be. Cool. Um, the next question. How can I have a GPG appropriate fax uh, encryption? How does fax 3 work, encryption work and how does the key exchange work? Um, that's an interesting question. It's uh, def defined in T4. There is a definition. I have not looked into it yet because I do not believe that there is a fax device that supports uh, this. But hypothetically, we have fax encryption. Uh, what group of devices? The Fritz box. Fritz box is the Fritz box itself has many functions. It's also a router, but it supports fax group of group three. I do not know whether it might support fax of fax group four, but hypothetically, we could also send group four fax of via via transparent data through voice over IP. However, usually uh, it, it operates like a group 3 fax or as a, a, a 38A if you activate 38. When can we use T38? What needs to happen? Uh, is it dependent of the provider or fax device or router? Uh, that depends on a lot of, of, of specifications. Ideally, uh, T38 is from one end to the other end, and we have a voice of IP connection between those two. And in addition, we need uh, to be codec transparent. That means uh, if one device requests C38 that needs to be transparently connected to the second device and that needs to be answered that it is uh, transmitted appropriately. There are service providers that do not offer this and there is an asterisk in between and that does not transmit the request. You can then turn T38 back to normal voice data, but there is always some loss and that leads to faxes arriving with a reduced probability. So hypothetically, uh, we, it should work if you have two Fritz boxes at a German Telecom and the T38 connection should read through. Among provider, it's even more questionable. I, perhaps there are other connections where T38 definitely does not work. And then there are two more questions. First of all, where can I find the T4? T4 is... Uh, is available on a uh, homepage on a website, but I don't know the, the uh, website. If you look iut e and then t dot four, you should find the specification or 
search for T.30 and you will find the fax standard. And there is a list with all the T standards and you just can click on them and get the PDF. And then um, are there details to T38 on the Fritz box? Do you know some details about it? Uh, it's a question what what details are interesting about I happen to know that the Fritz box actually sup don't support one specific modem standard. It's a bug in the Fritz box and it's already reported and so far it just wasn't fixed. And it's a V17 with 4000 bits per second. It's a rare standard but the Fritz box does not support this standard. Therefore, Transmission data, transmissions through this data standards are not possible, but I don't know further details. It works quite well with, those, with, with the Fritzbox. And Fritzbox is a German uh, router manufacturer. Uh, AVM is the, the name of the room. Thank you very much. Uh, perhaps you uh, led to one or the other person being more interested into faxing. Thank you for having me here.